Ah, yeah, here we've got a JBL 515 XT mixer. And I've noticed, I don't know whether it's just the age of the products as they've been in service for longer and longer, but I've noticed that there's been quite a, a lot um, more mixer failures lately. And the problem with the mixer is, um, well, one thing is that there's no circuit schematic that I have ever seen, so it's a case of working out. There is a 515 XT mixer um, diagram on the net, but I think it's got one page missing because um, ICs and uh, U5, U8, U9, U10, U11, U12, U18 are on this board but they're not on the actual schematic that's available online and I've never seen a full schematic for this so it's a question of poking about and wondering what's going on and I just thought I'd just give you a couple of pointers because I've just repaired this one and they use the um, 33078 op amp M33078 Texas or uh, on semi make it a number of people make it it's a 16 megahertz plus or minus 18 volt fairly power hungry um, op amp, this is turned on at the moment so I'm not touching that side but they're warm um, and there's chips on both sides as well so you've got a double sided um, thing going on here and it seems the input side of the schematic, you'll see it online, is correct but up to the point where um, the pinout on this connector is different um, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4 pins 5 and 6 of the LF drive and I can't remember the other ones but um, yeah and you can either get several faults with these either it's noisy distorted or there's no sound at all or s strange effects going on and the most disturbing thing about this mixer board is that um, if this thing goes completely haywire and starts sending the incorrect signals up this <coughs> cable differential signals up to the LF power amplifier it can take out the LF power amplifier as well, which in fact is what happened on this one. Um, I saw the normal LF power amplifier faults and I didn't check the mixer and I plugged it back in and it worked for a while and then went unstable, blew up the power amplifier with loads of distortion. And you know, if the signals aren't for the LF power amplifier on the servo, the DC, DC um, uh, switch D class for the D class switching. Uh, control circuit down there if it doesn't ex receive what it's expecting in the wave band that it's expecting i.e. low audio with low noise if you start getting oscillations and HF and other stuff going up here it destroys the output devices okay so I repaired this once I've repaired it again it's all working now but just to talk about this board I'm guessing everyone knows what they're doing um, we'll find this boring but for the guys that have got a problem is that these chips are about um, 40 to 50 cents each the Texas ones and they are all the same on here and fault finding turns out to be um, it's, it's not a foolproof method of finding out what's going on but it is a pretty good method of having a guess and if you buy a pack of 10 chips then you'll likely if you change some of these and I'll show you which ones in a minute just fix it okay it's, it's nearly always we have to get the occasional socket and pot and thing going but the general I'm talking about the electronic faults at the moment um, that point there you can see down there on the end of that capacitor is 0 volts and that's where I've been hooking my scope probe so that's just a wire I've soldered on which I've got to take off in a moment but where are we yeah so anyway um, on these chips you've got uh, two inputs so you've got pin 1 is, is, is minus 15 or minus power supply rail and pin 8 is the positive power supply rail so the first thing to check is that you've got the supply rails and it's supposed to be minus 15 and plus 15 okay if it reads something else like plus 22 plus 23 or minus 22 minus 23 it means the um, 7815 um, 7815 or 7915 regulators have blown up on down the end on the power board because it, it's regulating comes up here and I have seen them running with a shorted plus 15 volt rail and um, still going but behaving strange, not sounding quite right and it turns out the regulator had gone down there and it was shoving up plus 24 and minus 15 instead of the plus and minus 15 for the um, the two two rails okay so just check you've got the power supply um, if you see one of these chips burnt out 
um, they're quite power hungry when they go short they can start demanding a lot of current and it's supposed to be regulated by the 7915 or the 7815 regulators plus and minus regulators and they're one amp regulators so you can get up to 15 watts going into the chip but what seems to happen is that the chip will go short start demanding too much power and burn the regulator out and when the regulator goes short it then fries up these chips so you know and occasionally when you see one that's been cracked open or it's got physically burnt you need to take the screws out take the collets off the jack sockets and take it off and have a look on the other side because there's e easily as many chips on the other side as well is that um, when that regulator shorts these go up in smoke but when you change the chip it usually starts working okay so if you've got an electronic fault on these it's usually just one chip right so which one is it um, you, you've got a common input and you'll see this on circuit diagram there's a common input goes to a mix signal so up post the mixer the three uh, volume controls on the back and the three inputs post mixer it's all common okay but it splits up for an LF compressor and an HF compressor filtering out the two channels to suit the speaker enclosure and also molding the signal to give the best sound you know, based, based on the dynamics of the speaker enclosure and the response of the speakers. So it's part of the nice sounding packages in here, obviously. It's not a straightforward mix it and send it. It's a mix it, massage it, split it into two channels and then send it. So, um, but there's no circuit diagram for the LF compressor at all online. Yeah, so here's the data sheet for the MC33078. It's usually the DG one, actually. You be careful which one you order. We obviously got the right package. So it's OIC8-8 package. But you can see the spec a bit here. You can freeze frame and have a look at that if you want. But I was just going to scoot down to um, the package. So there's there's the actual package there. If I just zoom in on that so you can have a better, a better look. Um, and how can I shove that over there? Can I shove that over there? Get that in the middle. There you go, so that, that's the pinout of that chip. You've got the uh, minus rail pin 4, plus rail pin 8, and then the two differential inputs are here, the output's pin 7 and pin 1. All right? And through the feedback network, generally in audio circuitry, I'm not talking about instrumentation control, that the, the job of this is through a feedback network. The theory that works on that the gain, the open loop gain, is pretty much infinite. It obviously it isn't infinite, but for all intents and purposes, with regard to the signal level, you've got a very linear feedback network which gives you very low distortion. Plus the fact it's working on plus or minus 15 volt rails, so you've got a very linear uh, part of the uh, um, operating range that all the transistors and the devices inside are working on to give a linear distortion free. Obviously non-linear equals distortion, linear amplifier equals low distortion. Um, obviously fairly low noise as well. So the output network, it might be another chip in the output network, drives these back to be um, equal, plus and minus must be equal to each other, in which case the output will be on an audio AC coupled circuit, the output should read more or less zero on most of the devices, okay. Yeah, that's the chip. Um, yeah, make sure you're all the right one. And there's the internal schematic of the chip. You can see there's quite a bit, there's even capacitors in there, look at that, and a diode, wow and a biasing amplifier, very clever. Anyway, uh, that's it, so back to the main video. Yeah, so you look on the, each chip has got its own decoupling capacitor, and then on these decoupling capacitors, make sure we don't short anything out here, you can see I'm, I'm, this is a decoupling capacitor next, right next to the chip. On one end we've got 14.92, and on the other end you've got 0 volts, and then the other decoupling capacitor here is Naught volts on one end, and then the other end is four, minus 14.73. So there's your plus and minus nominal 15 volt rails. Okay. So pin four, pin four is minus 15 volt rail, and pin. If I can make contact, there's a lot of flux on there actually. I need to clean this off. P pin eight. So pin four is the minus rail. Pin eight is the plus rail. So you should have the, those voltages on all the chips. Um, and so that leaves um, one and sorry, two and three are inputs, and one is the output. Okay, so it's a dual op amp 
16 megahertz bandwidth, fairly fruity op amp, operational amplifier. Pin one is the output, pin two and three are the inputs. And on the other side, uh, pin seven. Yeah. So on the other side, we've got five and six are inputs and seven is the output. All right. So the first thing to do is to check pin, the voltages on pin one and pin seven. With, you can do it with a voltmeter. You don't need a scope or anything, but don't short it out, whatever you do. But um, just, you should have zero volts on pretty much all of the chips. All right. Pin one and pin seven should read zero volts. So if the op amp goes screwy, um, the way they work is by the output drives the inputs back to be balanced, the plus and minus inputs, the inverting and non-inverting inputs. It drives back through some kind of feedback network, feedback network to the pins so that the pins automatically want to drive themselves so that they're equal, so that you've got zero output. Now this is not foolproof because some of these um, have other operational amplifiers in the feedback loop, so it's a closed loop type operation. So if one goes, it can drive the voltages out on another, right? But you don't really need necessarily to worry about that because, um, you know, change two chips or three chips. You know, if you have to change four, you're talking about a couple of dollars in cost and they're easy to change, they're only eight pin and they're not fine pitch, okay? So just go along and meter the chips, pins, pins one and pin seven to ground. And if it's plus 15 or minus 15 or nine or 10 volts or something, it's not near zero, there's a pretty good indication that that chip is blown and just change it, which is what I did for this one. And I um, just metered those pins and found that two of them weren't reading right. So I changed them and it fixed the problem. But I've repaired quite a few of these and now I can just skip through and just measure the voltages on pin one and pin seven and pretty much guess I was one of those two chips, just change them. And you'd be surprised. And out of here, if you feed into the LF, it, with all the in the main input, with all the inputs uh, set to 12 o'clock, i.e. halfway, half gain, bass flat, treble flat, with a 250 millivolt input at 100 hertz, you should get something like uh, nearly on, getting on for a volt out of the differential outputs on pin five and six of this, right? And if you don't, then uh, there's something wrong. But yeah, just skip through and find the ones that aren't working and then scope the output. And you should get something like twice the input, um, twice the input uh, voltage peak to peak on the output when the thing's working. And then you can change the, I've got a frequency generator up there. You can change it to the kilohertz range for the HF channel. But I just thought it, you might find that interesting to help you diagnose and fix these things. They are. I guess relatively easy to fix but don't deliberate on trying to work out what the hell's going on without a circuit if you just check the um, the output to voltages on pins 1 and pin 7 are pretty nearly zero and if you see anything that's not zero then change the chip all right and then if that doesn't fix it change the next one and you'll find although obviously there are something like 18 or 22 chips on there. Um, the ones that have blown, in my experience, have always got um, the wrong voltage on pin one or pin seven, so it's a good guide. Clearly, you need to make sure that the input socket isn't damaged. Um, that's this thing here and these. By plugging it in and just checking the uh, input signal is present, because if there's a mechanical failure inside the connector, then obviously you won't get any output from it. But um, yeah, I don't know whether it's just the age, but as I say, they just seem to be failing lately. Um, I've seen more mixers this year, nothing I've ever seen before, apart from ones where the input chip has blown, you know, through something that's come down the cable. But generally, they're fairly well protected and okay, but I thought you might find that interesting, because uh, they're not that uh, daunting to repair, and with a bit of soldering skill you can change the chips so a quick uh, it's a, it is a kind of thing you can probably fix you've got a good chance of fixing it with just a voltmeter and a soldering iron and a little bit of soldering skill so there it is um, put it out there for you guys that want to know it so I hope you like that if you want to subscribe to the link down here 
that would be appreciated for you JBL repair people. Anyway, that's good, so signing off. Good luck with yours.